I wanted to start this one off with a comment from a viewer because I I definitely resonate with what he's saying here. MMORPGs blew me away from 99 to 05. However, they were technically impressive for the time and were doing new ideas in a time where the internet wasn't the mainstream. Now everything is on the internet. Everything is an online community. You can chat to people everywhere. Like how genres die because they're all turned into RPGs now. There are no pure genres anymore. Everything is an RPG. That is what happened with MMORPGs. The worlds got gutted out of them and everything else was transported into other online games. We still have a few coming out now and then, but they're not impressive. They do not do anything new and they, are, they do not have big seamless worlds anymore. Man, isn't that the truth? I used to log into Star Wars Galaxies just to be in that world and chat to people as it was mind-blowing, but no new MMORPG could ever replicate that today. The closest experience I had to it was in VR in 2016 when I had my mind blown, but I've done it now. I'm bored of VR and want the next thing that hasn't come along yet. Yeah, VR, the problem with VR right now, in my opinion, is it just needs to get past the tech demo stage, but there's still things in VR that are left to blow your mind, dude. It's just... It's coming along real slow. The problem with getting older, why I barely play games anymore, I mean, every game we're playing today is basically the same as any 360 game. This is exactly how I feel about gaming. It's like it's stuck in a rut. And no one has reinvented the genres we played in that era. We've hit the first time in gaming history where nothing new is being done. To kids, they know no better, but to people like us, we've been there and done that. Speaking of been there... And done that, here we are again in the wonderful world of EQOA. Yeah, dude, that's called being jaded, definitely. And uh, and it's not it's not just being jaded, because when you say somebody's jaded, it's all on them, right? Usually that's the implication, at least that's my understanding. It's not just that. It really is stale and boring now. Everything is cookie cutter. And what's worse is you've got this this nonsense SJW propaganda stuff getting just funneled into everything new even mario <laughs> if you told me when anita sarkeesian first said that you know rescuing the princess is sexist if you told me that was going to take off to the point where the mario trailer was going to have things in it that are making me go here we go again mario's a bumbling idiot peach is a mary sue same old cookie cutter sjw crap so you've also got that going against you <laughs> That could be that could be a bait and switch, by the way. They might put something like that in their trailer, and then it's not so bad. Um, I'm really hoping that Mario doesn't go, you know, turn it up to 11 on the SJW scale. But yeah, there's, you know, they're, they're already leaning towards that in a freaking Mario movie, dude. So, <laughs> so you've got that plus. This was the world that I logged into. There wasn't. You know, I didn't really have anything else. For, for me, it was kind of strange because I didn't have a PC at the time. This here was how I interacted with people. Outside of like a web TV. <laughs> you know, like years before that I had. And, uh, and chatting with people in that regard. People also forget how addicting it was just to be in a chat room. When chat rooms first came around, they were very, very addicting. Because you would just sit there and randomly just shoot the breeze with, with everybody, just random people. So when you took a, an amazing world like this and you made it into an area where people could hang out and talk and just kind of live in and they could express themselves through their character, different races and classes and all the stuff that they're wearing, it's quite the combination. But for me, this was my internet. There was no main page to the internet but EverQuest Online Adventures. And like SOCOM. <laughs> now everything, you got a main page, right? You, you log in, you've got all that. I mean, you guys were probably using computers back then, but I wasn't, dude. So if I wasn't logged into EverQuest, I wasn't connected to the world. And that's, I think, a big part of the reason why it's so addicting. And then, well, at least it was. And it still is. If it, if it came out, if it came out today, I'd still be addicted to it. But that brings me to my next point. Do you think this game would ever see new blood come into it? And uh, there's this thing going on right now with EverQuest 1 called EQ Lantern, where they're trying to get the game in Unity. And I don't know too much about game engines and this and that. I'm not, I'm not very savvy with all that stuff. But uh, 
evidently they're working on getting EverQuest 1 onto that Unity engine. And you know that, for one, will clean up the UI that I've had a problem with for years. And uh, if you haven't seen the video I did on that years ago, I'll link it up. I'll put it up in the top right now for you to check that out. Um, it'll be nice to see that and a lot of things coming to EverQuest 1. But my main interest is if EQOA can utilize that at some point. And I've heard from people, Unity is it, it's kind of a pain because there's these things that it's just not great. But it's also really newbie developer friendly, which is exactly what we need for EQOA. But I don't know. I, I was just thinking maybe someday they could get the game over to that because Nathan Napalm just uploaded a video about that, actually. That's why I'm even talking about this. Because in the last video I did, I was talking about F4 and how problematic F4 is. And being on PCSX, it's going to have its issues. So if it could get ported over to Unity eventually, that would be really nice. Not only that, it would make it more accessible for people. It would be free. And if it was easily accessible and free, I think we'd pull in a lot of people that never played it before. And I know some of you are probably thinking, oh, they can just spend their time doing something else. But no, think about it. It's free. <laughs> there, there's a lot of appeal to that. There's a lot of people who would say, oh, I, I never checked that out. Free MMORPG. I'll give it a whirl. I'll give them a whirl. And then before you know it, they're like, hey, this isn't half bad. I wonder how many new players we could pull in. Even if it was just still on PCSX2. I mean, it's a little bit more of a hoop to jump through. But I'm wondering how many new new players we can pull in. And if you happen to be somebody who's never played the game and you found out about it recently, let me know down in the comments. Because I'm just... I was, I was standing where I was in the beginning of the video, just looking over Darver Manor. And I just remember all the people running back and forth, watching them come in to the zone and coach out. And I just miss that. I want to see like 30, 40 people in a half an hour come in and out of that zone. I want to see people come running through here to go out to the Silith Mines and stuff. That's what I want to see that again. So bad. I miss that, guys. I miss seeing people running around in the world and doing their thing. And uh, yeah, I've talked to people before. And they, they had never played it, and they said that they've been interested. So, yeah, with WoW Classic, people seem to be interested. There seems to be a whole new generation that is into retro gaming and stuff that they might have missed out on. So I think EQOA has a decent shot. If it can actually get out the door someday, you know, I don't mean to sound impatient, but I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> the world's not getting less violent, so... Yeah, man, it would be nice if this would come out soon. I'd love to see just all these people behind me coming and going, doing their thing, running around, pets trailing behind them. Wouldn't that be amazing, guys? That would be so cool. You know, it's crazy, and God forgive me for saying this. I've got over 6,000 games, and the only one I want to play is this one. And I can't. I can't. I mean, I can, but I can't. You guys, you know what I'm talking about, man. I... <sighs> Why do I torture myself so... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's just one of those things. I've got a cabinet over here, and it's got a ton of games on it. And before anybody starts yelling piracy or thievery or whatever at me, dude, try to hunt down these arcade boards, and I'll see you like hundreds of thousands of dollars later. At a certain point, it's preservation, dude. And these games are old, and if you were to try to buy them all, forget it. Forget it. I play. I play most of them I play them for like, a couple of minutes, I'm like, oh, man, that was cool. And I'm off to the next one. Um, I've got a the V-pin over here. And it's got a bunch of stuff on it. I've got the Switch. I've got the 3DS. I've got the Vita. I've got access to tons of games on Steam. That, so it's probably closer to 7,000 games. Something crazy like that. And this is the only one that I really, truly want to be playing again. Listen to that. It's beautiful, man. That they got that blue light going on over here that I talked about in the uh, the first episode. It's more it's more like the second um, let's play EQO away because the first one I made was years ago. It's like 2015 or something like that. It's crazy how much time gets away from you. It's absolutely insane. I'm just randomly roaming around. I'm gonna have to put some music in here. I'm probably gonna hunt down some EverQuest One music. I really like the Steam Font Mountains music, and I've said it before, it should have been in this game, dang it. And speaking of music, what were you guys listening to back in the day? 
Now, I know this has been brought up a million times. I've probably talked about it myself like five. I don't care. <laughs> what were you listening to? I want to hear it in the comments below. I'm going to try to link to a couple of songs just briefly to give you an idea of the stuff that I was into, which was really baritone and deep and, and kind of dark. <laughs> But uh, hopefully it doesn't get hit with uh, any claims or anything like that or a strike. So yeah, that's the that's the kind of stuff I was into. Not most people probably weren't into the whole gothic metal and you know, I mean Kill Switch Engage is a little bit more mainstream. But when I play this game, that's what I think of. I think of Typo Negative, Life is Killing Me, especially that album. And uh, End of Heartache from Kill Switch Engage. I believe that was the name of the album. Look at that, the sun's coming up, it's perfect. <laughs> and I'm not gonna tell you guys to get out of here because you gotta make uh hey. <laughs> the sun is shining. I still haven't uploaded that yet. I'm kind of keeping these, I'm keeping these close and, and releasing like one a week. That way I've got a couple of them in the vault ready to go. Uh, the comments on the last video are really good. The views are, aren't that great. It's, they're not terrible. But the comments, that's what I want to see from you guys. That's what encourages me to keep going. The viewership, if it only hits like 250 to 500, whatever, you know, it's just the way it is. As long as I've got people talking to me and I know that they're interested and they're interacting with me, that's the motivation, guys, that I need. That's what I need to keep going. It's not about the money. It's about the people who love the game and they want to talk about it. And, you know, they can deal with me every now and then talking about Jesus <laughs> and things going on in the world. If, if you can, you know, I don't know. I guess part of my heart breaks for the fact that I've been doing this for such a long time and I don't want to sound arrogant but I've been carrying a torch over here. And the second I went off somewhere where people didn't want me to go, they just took off. And in society, we do that a lot now. Like, it's so weird how we have to completely agree with a person or they're our enemy. And we don't want to hear anything and we shut up our ears and close our eyes. And it's like, we never used to live like that, guys. If you're younger, I don't know if you're aware, but people could have differences back in the day and still exist in the same space. They could still come together over a common love for something and not be like, oh, you like Jesus? Pfft, I'm out of here. I don't need you preaching to me. Like, I get it, but at the same time, I don't because I've been loyal. I've been a loyal friend to y'all, man. And it just kind of breaks my heart sometimes. <laughs> There's definitely been a lot of people who said, eh, hey, forget that guy. I'm out of here. Well, I'm just going to keep doing this. And I'm, and I'm not going to try to badger people over the head every episode. But you're going to hear me mention God. You're going to hear me talk about Jesus. You're going to hear me point things out where I'm like, that's it's a beautiful thing. It's a blessed thing. So if that annoys you and you have to leave, that's unfortunate. But I'm still here, man. <laughs> and it's nice to know that there's still people down in the comment section willing to interact with me. So you could tell that when I first came back, I was feeling like a little... A little hurt. <laughs> that video, I, I listened to it back and I kind of cringe. It's like, yeah, you were wearing your heart on your sleeve a little bit there. But I don't know, man. That's part of being real with people. You know, you kind of put your feelings out there for the whole world to hear. And it's it's kind of strange. Because I'm naturally introverted. I'm not. But this channel brought me out of my shell many years ago. And I, every now and then I kind of clam back up. And then I come back around and talk again. But yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, sorry to go on a, on, a, on a tangent there on you guys. I think we're going to go visit a dragon that I've never seen before. And, and there's so many things I've never seen in this game. We're going to be taking a look at Melissa's tomb as well. I don't know if those of you uh, who know about that place, 
There's probably a lot of you who missed it, because I missed it. And the missus missed it as well, until we uh, we had the the free roam edition of the game, I guess you'd call it, before the NPCs were put in, where it was just the save state. Um, but man, this place is beautiful. Where are we? It is beautiful out here, dude. <laughs> I really love the scenery out here. It's really nice. Anyway, now that I said that, let's get wrong. Well, all right, I can't do it. What's over here? There are just going to be some ruins, right? There's not going to be much. It's amazing. The more you walk around this game, the more you realize, I don't know if I've seen. Okay. All right, so there's not much there. <laughs> look at look at the vast wilderness that is EQOA and behold its greatness. All right, I just I hit it up on the map. We're loading in now. I almost don't want to do this. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's got my favorite music. The plane of water, dude. How do you say that, guys? I don't know how to say that. Skyer, Skyer. It's me, Skyer. I am protecting. I'm protecting the treasure. The treasure. What's over? Nothing. Just like a big. Okay, so you would you would position your healers right back here, something like that. <laughs> How simple was it back then? All we had was tank and spank. That's one of the things I got to give credit to uh, World of Warcraft. They really made raids a lot more interesting, didn't they? Back then, it was just tank it, spank it, hide behind a rock, dodge the AOE. You know, do that for three hours straight, and then, and then roll and lose horribly every time and get nothing. But it was fun, wasn't it? I didn't do a lot of raiding, so I can't really complain about it. But uh, the few dragons I did take down, yep, didn't get anything for it. I'm pretty sure it was just to clear somebody's quest, getting somebody the uh, their portal to uh, play in the sky, which was always nice. But uh, I've, I don't know. Okay, this is the box canyons. Let's speed up real quick. I'm sorry, I know that's kind of annoying y'all. Oh, wow. Access to this dragon wasn't too insane. Unless we're missing some mobs out here. I love it. Listen to that. The missus loves that every time that happens. She's like, oh, EQOA stock sounds like... <laughs> it's like the stock... She doesn't say that, but that's, you know... Anyway, Inferno Drake. Yeah, they look like you're gonna... You're gonna get whooped by them, man. So, I don't know. It seems like there should be some more things in here before you can just... It seems a little too easy to get down there. But I've never seen this, and uh, once again, I tuned into the LFG podcast, which everybody here should be doing if you're not doing that. I don't know. You're living under a rock? What are you doing? <laughs> Subscribe. Go check out the LFG, uh, the EQA Renaissance channel. I mean, there's a reason why I got their poster on my wall, man. But, uh, yeah. It's nice to hear them talking about all this stuff, because there's so much of this that I missed. And there's another thing I don't think I ever saw. And we're just going to zip over there real quick before we wrap up. I know I said I didn't like the eyeball symbol, right? Because it's a symbol of evil. And in that context, and a lot of things in the world, it is. But <laughs> these eyes, and they are literally called evil eyes, are one of my favorite mobs in the game. I just, I really like killing them. <laughs> and this one. <laughs> Look at that thing. I don't think I've ever fought him. Where are we? Mossmouth Cavern. Okay. Maybe I did come down here in a previous episode. You guys are going to have to jog my memory, dude. Did we come down here? I don't remember. But uh, he is awesome. They're just awesome. They, they look really cool. They're fun enemies. And the interesting thing about them is I believe they come from the giants. They were uh, resurrected and... In EverQuest 1 and 2, you've got the hands. I know you guys have seen them. You can actually get a mount, I think, in EverQuest 1 and 2. Of the hands. And they got the mounts underneath them. They're really creepy. <laughs> Those are the giant hands. So somebody took the eyeballs of the giants, and somebody took their hands, and they reanimated them. And there's a whole story on that. 
Uh, yeah, I'm sure you could hunt it down here on YouTube. But yeah. In terms of an enemy, I really like them. I just like to kill them. Okay, well, here we are in Blake Down, just outside of Melissa's tomb. And for those of you who might not know where that is, we're going to zoom in real quick. And it's pretty easy to find yourself on this map if you're in the general area because you'll just find, you'll just be a little square out in the middle of nowhere out here and right there we can see there's a guardian just kind of hanging out right there i've never been in here and like i said the missus came here but it was after the game was taken down and it was just in the uh in the save state type deal back when you could just play as corston what's up buddy He's yellow to me. He's going to whoop my butt, man. I think that it said on the wiki that this place was 20s. 20s or 30s. Man, creepy music in here. Whew. How does a game so old have such atmosphere? Like, at a certain point, graphics don't really matter, I guess. The Mist Runner... I've never stood in front of this. And here's the thing. I, it, I might have, but I forgot. Oh, doesn't it stink, though? That's the thing about these older games. You can't really... You can't read that. <laughs> that's cool. Got struck by lightning and caught on fire. Man, that's a just... That's a curse, dude. Ran aground, and that was the end of uh, Melissa, huh? Four seasons of Melissa. Huh. Interesting. That's weird, dude. Oh, I can hear somebody whisp whispering. That might <laughs> it was just in the track itself. I'm like, wait a minute, is that coming off of one of these? No, the mobs didn't have that. It's part of the uh, the audio. So here's Melissa's little tribute area. Tobias. Tobias, why are you standing in this little dish, dude? Interesting. Creepy whispers in here. Um, so I read that Melissa was a very, very rare spawn. And in order to get Melissa to spawn, you had to kill her, her placeholder. So this is the kind of place where people would be hanging out. And it'd be camp probably for a while. I don't know. I don't know how many years people were holding this down, but you know how it was. This game, it's easy to forget about how competitive this game was, man. No, you didn't have PvP, but everybody was fighting over the mobs. And it could get ugly. Look at that. Check that out. Huh. Man, you don't fall down there. They got the Rancor down there. I heard him. You heard him. You just heard him. That was a rancor, I swear. <laughs> Captain Snitus, Advisor Janar, and Priest Rogar. All right. Where's your robes, man? <laughs> you need a robe. Skeleton High Guard. He's like, I'm dead, homie. They took my robe. I got magical bones. I don't need them. I don't need no gear. Oh, here she is. Oh, that's disappointing. She's just a skeleton. They should have made her like green or something, right? Put some moss on her bones. So there's Lady Melissa. Well, Melissa, we never met. It's it's been 20 years, Melissa. And I feel ashamed of myself that I've never been in here not once. But hey, that's that's the awesomeness. That's the uh the beauty of EQOA. It, it's such a massive game that even people who completely nerded out on it and never left it they find things in the game and they've never come across them. This has a very Tomb Raider vibe to it. All right, y'all. Well, that's going to cut it for this episode. Now, I am going to be coming back with a Christmas episode, believe it or not. So I've got some things lined up for that. I don't know. Um, like I said, it's, it's kind of hard to keep reaching for topics. Uh, but I'm just going to keep trying my hardest. I've got notes here, man. You guys would be proud. I'm like, hmm, that would be interesting to talk about. That would be interesting to talk about. I'm going to write that down. So I'm just trying to keep it going here. Keep the torch burning. Long live EQOA, guys. God bless, and I'll see you all in the next video.